Hello everybody, you're back here with Jackson from Stunt Culture and today I'm going to be doing a video on how to make your tumbling nice and poppy. Alrighty, so Something that's so, 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 so important and I cannot stress enough to all my athletes is how you pop off the ground while doing your tumbling, okay? So a lot of people tend to break at the hips, they pike and then they lift their chest. They pike and then they lift their chest. Now it does work to a degree, but it's not specifically correct. You wanna be able to like push off your hands and get a nice pop. So that then as your feet hit the floor, your chest is already lifted up off the floor, lifting into the next skill. So why a lot of people when they do their round of handsprings, it's quite heavy, it's quite loud. You can be a eight year old kid and you can tumble louder than a 20 year old. So it just, it varies on how you move your body and how you use your body to lift up from the floor. Your tumbling never wants to be going into the floor, it wants to be lifting up off the floor. That's why some people tumble like ninjas. You look at them and you're like, oh, so quiet. So today I'm gonna go over a few things to make you tumble like a ninja. All right, so first thing I'm gonna show you guys is you can do this at home. And any wall, as long as you're not putting your greeblies all over it and leaving marks so your mum gets mad at me, make sure you wash your hands. So, feet up, feet away from the wall, hands up next, arms up next to your ears, and what you're going to do is you're going to push through your shoulders and your fingertips. And you're really gonna try and focus on pushing as hard off the wall as you can, trying to stand up. The easier it gets, move your feet out further. This is a really good exercise to get that block and that push through your fingertips and shoulders when you're coming out of your round off and your handspring so you can get that nice big pop and get that lift. I'm gonna show you a little secret, not a secret. Pretty sure I've done this in my videos before. Your tumbling should be like a broomstick. Now, if you're piking out of your round off, so if I do a round off and I break at the hips, and then my chest comes up, two things. I broke my shape and it was very loud and hard on my body. Okay. If you tumble like a broomstick, you should get that pop off your hands. So you go down on your hands and if you get a good pop off your hands to lift up, your chest is then going to be going through into the back handspring before your feet even touch. Hopefully I can make this broom do a back handspring. Sometimes it doesn't work, but so I'm gonna throw it round off and then it'll bounce into a back handspring. First try. I so, hope I got that. <laughs> so that's what you want your tumbling to be like. So rather than, I'll show you two examples. The first way I'm gonna pike and my knees will probably track over my toes and then I'll throw backwards. So watching now. So I was like very bendy, I piked, I lifted my chest up. Very loud and hard on the body. These old bones can't handle tumbling like that anymore. So now I'm gonna do it the right way. And what I'm gonna really focus on is I'm gonna kick my back leg up, snap together, and then allow that momentum coming through the top of my round off to allow me to push off my hands and then let my, my own body lever through like a broomstick. Hopefully, it all works out. Little bit loud, but the length and the power was like infinitely better. So now I'm gonna try and quieten it down. <laughs> Hopefully that was a little bit quieter. <laughs> so basically all I did to make it quieter, I made it longer, but I was a little bit more aggressive lifting my chest up as I pushed through so I didn't have a lot of impact hitting the floor. Constantly lifting up off the floor. So the importance of this is it also allows you to adjust your blocking angle. So a lot of people will slam their feet down and then lift up with their chest to go into a tuck or it, this, practicing this particular type of tumbling, having that like time between your hands and your feet, it allows you to gauge where you put your feet and like adjust the angles. And it's super important because especially if you get to a quite an elite level and you start doing bounding skills, like full whip doubles, you really need to be able to like gauge where your toes are. And if you never learn how to do that in a, a simple round off back handspring, it's gonna be really hard for you to do when you start bounding skills. So you don't wanna be like breaking, opening, breaking, opening. You really wanna like try and produce that power through momentum and angles. Like it's super important, I can't stress enough. So 
So I'll show you guys a round of hamstring tuck now, and I want you guys to really, really watch how I push off my hands going into the tuck. You'll see a very distinct push and lift rather than me piking down and throwing my chest up into the skill. All right, making sure to watch where my hands hit, like when my hands hit the ground and how I push off and then adjust my shapes through punching to the floor. Through punching to the floor. I really tried to accent it and see that push that time, so I'll do it one more time to show you guys. Woo, you went so high you went out of screen. <laughs> <laughs> you, if you really practice this, you can start to like push and then a position where your toes go based on how much momentum you have to lift up higher or longer. Now this is super, super, super important, especially when it comes to standing tumbling. So a lot of people tend to pike down and like pull their toes through and throw their chest back when doing standing tumbling and they really, really struggle to get that power. Um, yes, a lot of it comes from strength and conditioning, but also like from what I've seen in the years I've been coaching, it's from a lack of understanding of when to push, when to pop, how to lift up off the floor. Something I always refer back to when teaching this um, particularly particular type of tumbling is a cartwheel pop. 90% of my athletes can do a cartwheel pop beautifully. Cartwheel pop is just a simple cartwheel where you push through your shoulders and you block off the floor and get your toes and your body projected towards the roof before it rotates back to your feet. So I'll show you. So normal cartwheel, and then a cartwheel pop, push through your shoulders, through your fingertips, and a little bit more aggressive with your feet. Push. Now that lift going up is exactly what we want out of our round off and our handspring. So when you're tumbling, you really need to focus on pushing, lifting, and then adjusting the angle of where your toes are based on how much you've pushed. So you're not necessarily wanting to scoop your toes through before a handspring, but push off the ground and get your chest up over the top of your toes before doing the back handspring. I hope that makes sense. Touching base on the standing tumbling really quickly. If you do not do this popping technique where you're pushing and blocking up off the floor and getting your chest over your toes, you're going to tend to break a lot and then throw your chest. And then that takes away a lot of the power. Especially, 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 especially if you train like that for however many years and then you want to learn how to two to whip double or one to whip, one to whip tuck, one to whip full. As soon as you start adding that whip, you're going to be going from bending your legs, throwing into a handspring, and then trying to do a whip like that, and it's just so difficult. You need to be able to push off your hands, get into a nice tall hollow shape to then punch and extend for the whip. That's why a lot of people find round off whips 10 times easier than handspring whips, because they don't pop up out of their handspring because it's naturally harder. So I'll show you handspring, handspring, and then a handspring whip, and I'll show you the difference between the two techniques and why it's more beneficial to be really practicing this pop. So that was two handsprings with no pop. And now I'll show you trying to stretch through my shoulders and get that pop and get my toes under to then push through for the next one. Still hard, standing tumbling is always gonna be hard, but significant increase in power. So now I'll show you the one to whip. Now this can be very hard on the body if you don't do it correctly with the pop. So, I'm sorry if there's like a little cut after this or a break, because... As you saw, I piked down on my handspring and then yeeted my chest back. Which is not good. A lot of people do it, some people get power from it, not ideal. Not healthy for the body. Now we're gonna show you that wonder whip with a little bit more of a pop. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I just, kind of threw myself into this video today and I do not remember the last time I did a Wonder Whip. So we'll see how she goes. Not too bad, still hurt a little. Might give it one more, one more red hot crack. Straighten them legs out. A little better. Still, I haven't tumbled like this in a long while so 
mind the, mind the bad technique in the bent legs. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. But overall, cannot stress enough, get that pop. You can do it at home on the grass, cartwheel pops. Cartwheel pops for days. The more cartwheel pops you do, the better you're gonna get at doing the round off, and then you'll feel that pop through your handspring, it's just gonna be better. Cartwheel pops, <laughs> lots of pops. <laughs> Thanks for watching ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you in the next video. Stay safe, and yeah. Like, subscribe, and comment. Like, subscribe, and comment. Do it. <laughs>